uh, I've invented a disease called ocean fever. Um, if you're ever bored in writing or stuff, just invent a syndrome, a disease, or a condition. It'll make you very happy. <laughs> um, but I think this has some kind of mystical or spiritual significance as well, which you can kind of intuit. Ocean fever. A pond, a lake, even a bay will not do. You feel irritable all the time. Nothing smells right. Nothing tastes clean. When you lie down, you long to be vertical again. And when you rise, you ache for rest. Most of the world's population suffers from this condition most of the time, which is why people everywhere are miserable and crazy, though perhaps slightly less so in South Dakota, where the land senses change at such a leisurely pace, it believes it's still covered by waters. And though you don't feel the precise <laughs> mixture of unease and swelling plenitude that you crave, you can still be battered by wind and rocked by sky. You can still watch cloud shadows lightly troubling sinewy ripples of grass. And the people who live by the ocean, they have it worst of all, even when they are in it, especially when they are in it. They're always wailing and lamenting because they can neither escape their skins nor swallow the waves, though the ferocious tears that spill out of them make the ocean itself feel quite at home. series of wrong numbers. Um, phone apology. I'm sorry I'm not Maria. I'm sorry I can't speak Spanish so that I could explain this to you. I did take three years of French in high school, but the only complete sentence I can remember is, regard comme elle tombe cette belle neige, which translated literally means, watch how she falls the beautiful snow. Useless in this situation, since it's neither <laughs> your language nor mine, and because it isn't snow you seek, but Maria. Whoever she is, I hope you find her soon, though with each phone call you sound so increasingly anxious, I think that this number, which happens to continuously and relentlessly not be hers, <laughs> is the only means you have of trying to reach her. I'm sorry that on your fourth attempt, I made the mistake of saying slowly in English, there is no Maria here. Since I could tell by your immediate waterfall that of Spanish exclamation that you mistook my use of her name for an acknowledgement that she was currently present, or had been, or would be soon. In actual fact, however, there is not even one Maria in my life. If there were, I would ask her to come over and answer the phone. No matter which languages she knew or did not know. It makes me sad on your behalf that there are so many combinations of numbers in this world. It makes me sad that the only one that connect you that can connect you to Maria is not the one you have been dialing. I wish I could retroactively grant myself some other number, some whole other telephone number, history, so that this could be hers. And thus, of course, she made up this number on purpose so that you would be sure to not find her. <laughs> which might be an even sadder story than the one in which you thought her number wrong. Or maybe they're equally sad, love being no less cruel than numbers in any speech. Um, there are people over huge bridges. There are people um, that the highway service provides to drive you across if you're terrified of bridges and you're likely to like freak out and, and stop and, and back up traffic for, for miles behind you. So they have people that will drive you across um, if you have that, that phobia, and they're called bridge escorts. And so this is, I, I made up a little um, poem in the voice of a bridge escort. I suspect it's not falling that people fear. It's rising into a blue that breaks open without mercy and without anesthesia. I've been tempted to blindfold them like horses led from a blazing barn. I've been tempted to smack them or to open the door and push them out, abandoning them right in the middle. But I don't really blame them. It's eerie crossing over. And the bridge sings and sways in the crosswinds. 
All bridges hate stillness, long to break loose, though it's the secret ones that get to me. The micro spans between twilight and dusk, remorse and regret, slate and ash. The smaller they are, the worse they vibrate and hum. Vertigo or rapture of the deep, it's enough to bring you to your knees a hundred times a day. I was raised Baptist, but I'm an incrementalist now. Sometimes when I close my eyes, I can feel the Holy Ghost opening ever narrower spaces for me to get lost in. That's when I remind myself of those rare riders who fall asleep in my truck like babies in car seats. They lean their heads back and they're out. When I stop at the other side, I like to watch them for a moment before I wake them. I like to imagine them connecting the stars inside their bodies or wandering through their childhood homes, amazed to find everything so much larger than they've remembered.